Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Tuesday, and we are back. We took a little break from our streaming so I could get that uh, perspective course done, but we are back now, and we are going to do some drawing and painting today. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about before we get started. We got, uh, first of all, i got to drink some water. We were just running around with our heads cut off trying to get stuff ready here. Everything was a bit of a rush this morning, or today, trying to get ready. But we are all set to go. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is our master class. If you could bring that up. We got the green screen up behind me. There oh, actually, uh, yeah, the, uh, the master class that is coming up this weekend. It's really close. If any of you are able to get here, please do, because uh, we are going to have a great time. It's going to be August 3rd and 4th. It's this coming Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we're down to the wire, and it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be talking about my career and all the ins and outs and all the different things that I've kind of come up against, you know, and, and, and kind of broken through and all that kind of stuff. Also, I'm also going to be talking about character design. I'm going to design right in front of you. I'm going to be talking about animation, and I'm going to be animating shots with you guys there. And the whole time, I want you guys asking questions, working with me, all that kind of stuff. The next day, I'm going to be talking about story and story structure and how we construct our, our films uh, at Disney. And then I'm also going to pitch an entire movie to you guys so you can see what we do when we do our pitching and how we do it. So I'm going to be doing that. Then I'm going to be talking about animal drawing. I'm going to be talking about creature design. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff all packed into two days. And it's going to be so much fun. And uh, it's at, it's like I said, it's in Orlando this Saturday and Sunday. It's at the Orlando Repertory Theater. Uh, it's a big theater uh, that's going to it seats uh, 300 people. And so we got lots of room for you guys to come in. And we're going to have a great time. And, uh, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say other than Dustin's going to be there. Vedanta's going to be there if you want to meet them. My daughter is going to be there. Oh, no, she's not going to be there now. She has to work. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a bummer. But, uh, my, you know, we're going to have the whole family there. And, uh, and Nick and the whole gang, the whole, uh, the whole company, and, and uh, we'd love to see you guys. But, like I said, most of all, you know, we're going to be teaching a lot of really fun, cool stuff. And I'd love to see you there. And so go over to creatureartteacher.com forward slash. Next thing, what have we got? We've got, uh, what are you pulling up? Perspective. Uh, oh, that's it. Our perspective course. The whole reason we missed you guys uh, on the last stream was Dustin and I were busy putting together this uh, perspective course. And we have now shot it. He is finishing up editing. And we have it up for sale right now for pre-order, if you want to get the pre-order, and it's 40% off. It'll never be this low again. So if you ever wanted to learn one point, two point, three point perspective, then this is the course to teach it. Perspective, you know, I was really lucky as a young child. My stepfather uh, was an interior designer, and he new one and two point and three point perspective and he started teaching it to me when I was eight years old and so I took what took, I, I thought it was magic when I started learning it and I kind of took it and ran with it and um, and over the years uh, I've been able to do a lot with it but you know by the time I was 18 years old uh, I was doing uh, architectural renderings to scale through the projection method and uh, I was able to get a job at an engineering firm doing renderings for them when I was 18, all because I knew uh, one and two point and three point perspective. And so you never know what's gonna happen, what kind of opportunities will open up for you if you have the right knowledge. And so perspective, I think, is something that every artist should have in their back pocket. And so it's really thorough. Like I said, I talk about one point, two point, three point. I talk about one and two point projection um, I also, we draw buildings, we draw cityscapes. Um, I draw a little cartoony spaceship with you guys, showing you how I think about those sorts of things when they're in perspective. So uh, it's a really cool course and it's available for order now, uh, for pre-order now at creatureartteacher.com at my website. 
And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is our new set of brushes that we've got out. All you guys have been asking me over, you know, countless streams that we've done um, a lot of, about the brushes that I use. And there's a few of them that I couldn't sell because they were given to me by my friend. And I just ethically, it's not just right. To, it's not right to sell them. So what I did instead is I went out and I created my own brushes that I felt like kind of match but I actually think they're a little better so and those are the brushes that I was using on the last two streams where I created the paintings of our dogs where I did Achilles and our little dog Max and, and th those are in the image right behind me yeah. are over here over here uh, over Achilles here. is over to your this side to your right this side yep there he is there's Achilles <laughs> and um, and so those are the the texture brushes that I use and they, uh, they're really great so I've come up with uh, 24 new texture brushes and I thought it'd be fun to do a painting today using those brushes. So that's what we're going to do. So just to go over all three st things, we've got, uh, oh, and also uh, Nick just reminded me, um, at the, uh, the master class, the live master class in Orlando, I'm going to be signing stuff for people. I'm going to be doing sketches and drawings for people. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of really cool stuff. and. Um, uh, that was just an added little bonus that I forgot about and I'm really excited to see you guys there so we've got the master class this weekend we've got our brand new course on perspective that is ready for pre-order and we've got our brand new set of textured brushes in Photoshop that are ready to uh, be used and purchased on our website they're really cool brushes um, and for those of you that are gonna say yeah but what about procreate brushes we're going to be getting to those next. Um, I know you have a big demand for them, and uh, it's something that we'll be getting into pretty soon. So, uh, so keep your an eye out for that. Uh, whew, that was a lot. A lot. So, I've got Dustin here. Hey, everybody! I'm back. And uh, Vedanta might poke her head in. Maybe Vedanta. Maybe not. She's working on her daughter's phone, and she's a little ticked off. Oh, wow. Her daughter locked her, uh, our daughter Heather locked herself out of her phone for like the second or third time. She locked herself out of her own yeah, phone? Yeah, she changed the password and then forgot the password. That's like you leaving the keys in the, in the car and accidentally locking the car. I do that all the time. We Not all do that all the time. But I've done it before. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, and then we got Nick in Sarasota. And he's going to be answering questions as well. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to jump in. Like I said, I want to use these new brushes. First of all, here they are. I got a little set, right? Whoops, oh, wrong thing. Not this set. This set. These are my new brushes right here over on the upper left. I, I wish you could zoom in on that, but uh, well, we can't. And uh, just really quickly, I'll, I'll give you a short little demonstration of uh, what they look like. Uh, so starting with this one, let me see how big it is. <laughs> I gotta change the color. <laughs> I gotta change the color. So I'm gonna <laughs> enlarge it a bit. So there's a texture right there, one of the textures. And then we've got this brush. That's really nice chalky. This one I really like a lot. It's got a nice chalky feel to it. Right there, like that. That comes out really nice. And we got this one here. This one's really interesting. It's got, I think this is great for like lizard skin. Something like that. It's got a really nice feel to it. Uh, another one here. Like so. There, I've got a little bit of a lag, I think, because we've, uh, oh, that's really big. There we go. Nice there little texture go. there. Kind of looks like dried up mud, like flakes of mud. Yeah. More texture there. That's why. I've got these things blown way up. This one's really cool. See that? There we go. I can blow it up for you. Very nice. See that? That's more like it. You like that? Yeah. 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 All right. What's this one here? 
Uh, do you use more than uh, four or five brushes? No. That's about that's about all I use is about four or five brushes. And these these textures really come in handy for skin, uh, grasses, and you know foliage and things like that. Um, they're really handy for that type of stuff. And these splatter brushes, I just I use this kind of stuff all the time. These kind of spackled looks right there. Uh, I use them all over the place. Any kind of texture brush like that, I just I find all kinds of use for. Yeah, I like that brush that you you have over there to the right. Like that one very much ha has an elephant skin yeah. kind of feel. And this one's got a nice little feel to it as well. Yeah, it's like. Um, like worn out like scratched glass yeah like that's been through that's been in like the desert for a while yeah oh this one's kind of fun it's just a line with stuff on it but I can press hard and get these extra little textures so you can almost get like a kind of a plant pine tree I'm drawing a pine tree uh, will you draw a reptile no nope, today I'm drawing an elephant Today I'm drawing an elephant. Elefante. But look at that. Elefante. Look at that pine tree. Look at that. Oh, pine tree. Look at that pine tree. Look at that pine tree. Look at that pine tree. Look at the pine tree. <laughs> See there? Look at that. We're making a pine tree. Now that's a pine tree. It actually, it's working. It comes out pretty nice. I like this brush for the, for this reason. Because you can make pine trees? Pine tree. Pine tree. Yeah, just... Look at that, just with one little brush. Made a pine tree. It made a pine tree. And then if we go to a little brighter color, with our pine tree. And the pine tree. See there? Two colors. Can we have some Elvis, please, Dustin? Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> gotta win this race. Right. Gotta win this race. So, there's that. That was a pine tree. That was a pine tree. And this is a, a similar texture, but much bigger. Very cool texture. I like this one. Bigger. Yeah, I really, you, you'll find a lot of uses for these brushes. I, I come up with all kinds of texture brushes, because that's, it really helps my... Uh, my images uh, become more organic looking and not so digital. So I'm always trying to find really good handmade looking textures like this. There we go. You can see that they have got a lot of variation in them. different weights right there these are somewhat similar with slight differences in weight and texture see I like this texture right here this is a really nice one which number is this this is 28 number 28 it's beauty yeah it is see there this is the one that I think is really useful for doing local color like the other textured brush I used to use for my buddy. I like, I kind of like this one even better because look, if I start putting some other texture over the top, some lighter color, you get a really great organic kind of pastel -y feel to it. See there? Nice. It's a nice feel. I like this one. It really feels chalky. And that's that's the kind of that's my favorite texture is that pastel kind of chalk look if I just keep going Can you make brushes available for Affinity Photo and Designer, please? Affinity Photo and Designer? I don't know what that is. I, I have no idea either. 
I thought you would know. No. But well, look yeah. at that nice gradation. I just, I just completely went from green to red. I completely transversed the complementary zone. We're getting this uh, question uh, uh, prompted. Would you like to direct a live action version of Brother Bear? Uh, I, that would be kind of cool, to be honest with you. Yeah, that would be kind of neat. I don't know if I'd like to direct. Uh, yeah, I think I would like to direct it. You know, it would be kind of fun. Whoops, whoa, where are we going? So I just wanted to give you that quick, uh, actually I'm not quite done yet. I want to give you a quick rundown of some of our shapes or some of our uh, brushes that are in the set. And Erica Bass has already been using some of the new brushes. Oh good. This one's kind of fun. I was showing Dustin this the other day. What's fun about this is we can sit down and it's all like a bunch of branches. You can make brambles and stuff with it, you know. And then you want to light them on fire. Watch this. It's really cool. I'm going to make this nice and big for you. Let's do some that are a little bit lighter. Got to make it big. There we go. I'm just going to make a big tumbleweed looking thing. But it's great texture, so watch this. Let's go, uh, keep it in the same vein. Let's go to uh, multiply. I'm getting some darker, darker ones in here. Now let's go on my brush blend mode. Let's go to overlay and go to a brighter one. YouTube question, do you have a brush uh, making tutorials? I don't recall. Yes, I've done a couple on YouTube and I have one in my digital painting course. So look at this, so we're in uh, overlay right now. And we're getting nice and warm inside there. Now watch this. Let's go to, I'm gonna go to multiply one more time. And we're just gonna darken this up a touch. Look, see, we're getting like this inner glow inside. Now watch this. I'm going to go to Color Dodge and really get it hot. Look at this. We're just going to get this sucker on fire. Look at that. Now our tumbleweed's on fire kind of neat. You can have some fun with these these brushes. This is just our little tumbleweed uh, branch brush, but you know, given enough time, you can really build up the texture really nice on it. Uh, Dustin, how was your trip? It was fun. Lots and lots of fun. Uh, went to my 10-year high school reunion. The drinks were overpriced. <laughs> but got to see a lot of people I haven't actually seen since high school. So 10 years, and yeah, it was absolute blast. I got to see everyone else. I usually go out and see every year, and uh, yeah, it was fun. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to jump over to my uh, draw a ninja hamster or raven. I'm actually <laughs> going to draw an elephant today. So today is elephant day. I haven't done an elephant in ages, and I've got really, I've got a nice image that I shot while I was in Kenya. Um, just a little profile shot of this elephant here. You're not kidding about being little. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and uh, right here. And um, I just, I love the shadow shapes and the lighting and all of that. So I want to get into that and uh, and do my version of this and, and really have some fun with the textured brushes on this. So that's why I picked the elephant because we've got some nice textures to play with. If I can get my daughter into your master class in Orlando, uh, will she able to meet you in person? Uh, yes. She's, she's 16 and she's followed you since she was 13. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yes, she will absolutely get to meet me. 100%. 100% guaranteed. Fooled. You saw the new Lion King, right? I did see the new Lion King. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I thought it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. 
and uh, but I missed the expressiveness of the of the you know the animals, um, the anthropomorphic expression that we have in the two D version. But other than that, I thought it was great. I thought Timon and Pumbaa were hilarious. I thought the singing voices of Beyonce and uh, um, I, I, Danny Glover were really good. Why well, are you pointing at me? Because I was just helping me. It's helping me think. <laughs> I was wanting you to help me out. YouTube question. Hey, Aaron, do you have any tips for drawing with fountain pens? Uh, don't run your hand against uh, over the top of it until it dries. <laughs> no, uh, with fountain pens, a lot of times you gotta you gotta pull the pen towards you. You you know if you're pushing the pen away, a lot of times that that tip will catch and splatter ink and all kinds of stuff. So try to get in the habit of pulling towards you uh, when you're drawing. So I've gone back to my my other brush that is free on our website and uh, my sketching brush and I just want to sketch with it right now and get a quick, a very quick sketch in of this elephant. Lauren just wrote, just, just seeing Lion King and there was little kids in the cinema crying when Mufasa died and she thought, I understand Amateurs. their pain. <laughs> Amateurs. I like it. I like the meme where it's, um, oh shoot. Oh, ha, first, first time. time huh? <laughs> <laughs> with the news. Yeah. It's from um, a ballad of um, uh, Scruggy uh, Scruggies. Bus Buster Scruggs. Scruggs and Buster Scruggs. Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah. That eye is way too big. Gotta shrink that eye up. Uh, will your Patreon streams be the same as membership streams, or will they both feature different content? Oh no, they're both going to feature different content. And I'm I'm actually. Uh, um, I'm really happy you brought that up because I forgot to mention that. Um, we're going to be putting out new images every week, every Tuesday on our Patreon. And so today, a new image is going out on Patreon if it hasn't gone already. And uh, we, uh, and with that, what you get, if, if, if you're doing the $1 donation, which is awesome, you get uh, a, um, a JPEG that you can download and you know you can make a poster out of it you can do whatever you want with it i don't care just don't resell it and then and you can use it as a screensaver for your phone whatever and then if you do the the five dollar donation um and this is image based by the way uh, then you get the um you get the actual photoshop file you get the entire file so you can break it down study it see you know all that stuff and so that's that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm really happy we're able to do that. And we have literally have hundreds, if not thousands of images that we have uh, backed up and ready that we want to, you know, that we're going to be using. And, uh, oh, the other thing too is uh, we'll be doing not just live streams here, but if you remember, uh, I think it's the $10 membership um, per month, uh, we are going to be, be doing exclusive live streams just for the Patreon members, and there you'll be able to uh, ask questions and interact as well. And hopefully, there'll be less people than what we have here, and you you know have a better chance of getting questions answered and that sort of thing. That's one of the things we struggle with is we get so many questions from all of the different platforms that we're working on that sometimes it's hard for us to well, it is hard for us to answer everybody. Aaron, my husband is dying to know. How is your cat who pooped on your picture? We have two cats, so so we know the pain of poop in bad locations. <laughs> well, that cat took flying lessons. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I would never do that to our cat. I actually pretty much laughed it off. Uh, the, the, the image actually already had little kitty footy footprints from when I left it out before, and the cat decided she wanted to walk all over it. And so it was kind of cute that I had this painting of a cougar and little cat prints all over it. So I wasn't, I just, I put it off to the side uh, up in my studio, but the funny part was Dustin and I were getting ready to shoot, and he's just standing there looking around, and I said, what's the matter? He goes, something smells really bad in here. <laughs> I smell poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that wasn't the word you used. Well, yeah, I used the other word, but making it rated G for the for the kids out there. There you but go. I, like, I smell poop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we didn't, and I, I was completely nose blind to it. So no, I, you were nose blind to it for 
during the first perspective video, but after a while, after it started simmering down a little bit, yeah, then you were like, oh, now I can smell it. Yeah, I, I've got a little bit of Nick in me. I mean, <laughs> not. I mean, I got a little bit of <laughs> Nick Birch and his nose blindness. Uh, the new image actually is up on Patreon. I just got a message from Nick. So it is up on Patreon. So that's exciting. Will you make a live stream where you will explain <clears throat> color, like color, uh, choices of color, uh, differences between RGB and CMYK? Yes, I can do that. We can definitely do that. And the elephant you're currently drawing, is that a Asian or African elephant? This is an African elephant. This is from Kenya. This is a female African elephant. One of the ways you can tell is you can see her head right here. It's basically kind of squared off. I know it's round up right here. But a male, a male African elephant, the head is more or less shaped like this. This really comes back at a slope. That's the male shape. Maybe not that strongly, but it, that is the shape. And then the female has this kind of shape right here squared off shape. Vomit. July 30th. <laughs> Why do I got a vomit face? I, I don't know. Did I miss something, Nick? Oh, was it the cat? Yeah, <laughs> the cat stuff. Oh, so the Patreon URL is Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com Patreon dot com forward slash Aaron Blaze Art. A-A-R-O-N B L A I S E A R T A R T A R T A R T <laughs> Aaron, I noticed last week you were struggling uh, finding a particular brush. My question is how how do you keep track of all of those brushes and know where to find one you need when you switch in a I, moment notice? I don't. <laughs> that's why <laughs> I that's one of my biggest uh, problems is I'm a very disorganized person and so I don't I just started putting my brushes into sets because of that that very incident where I'm sitting in front of about a thousand people on on a, on a stream and I'm looking for a brush and can't find it that's not that's not cool man it's not cool so I don't want to do that anymore so I'm trying to get a little bit better at being uh, at least knowing where my stuff is what do you think about this new iPad Pro and Procreate Wave? Do you think uh, it will replace the Cintiq and Photoshop? I don't know if I should buy an iPad or Cintiq since I have a low budget. I don't know. Um, when you talk, I, 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 I've been using Cintiqs for the last 13, 14, 15 years. Uh, I don't see Cintiqs going away. And I, you know, to me, a Cintiq is the top of the top of the line, but it depends. You know, because I don't, I've got an iPad Pro too. I don't use it nearly as much uh, because I find that usually when I leave my desk, uh, I go to traditional means. Um, but I am going to be using it, you know, more often. But right now, I tend to stay traditional when I'm not at my uh, Cintiq, when I'm not at my desk. For some reason, I don't know why, but I do. I love and I love their products. Uh, Wacom, I just they're they're really great products. Um, a lot of people complain about their price. I say you get what you pay for. Uh, it's a really good product, and I've always I've always liked it, and I've never felt like I've paid too much. Hello, Aaron again. I loved your video drawing your poodle dog. I have a poodle, and I really struggle rendering his curly hair. Yeah, hair is hair is a funny thing because you want to. Uh, a lot of people tend to, you know, try to hit all that hair, and the the reality is you don't you don't need to. You just you got to hit the the basic shapes of the the clumps that the hair is making, and then from there, you uh, you can define the hair a little bit more. So right now I'm just trying to find these shadow shapes a little bit more
Well, people are happy that I'm back. <laughs> oh, good. So people are like, Dustin is back! Hey, Dustin, you're a cool dude. Very good, positive vibes. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to get stuck in a lift in Scotland. Oh, come on. That was, that's a, that was a crappy segue. <laughs> you know me. I like crappy segues. Oh, we got some thunder coming in. That was a nice one. I don't know. I, I thought Vedanta did a pretty good job. I think a lot of people liked having Vedanta on there, too. I think your job's... Uh, better watch out, man. Mm. So, we're getting there. Uh, I'm going to blow this up. I don't like the composition. One of the beauties of... I think I'm going to let that... I'm going to let that tusk go right off the page. I'm going to let this shoulder go off the page as well. I like that. I like the negative space. And my point of view, or my center of view, my point of interest, blah, blah, can get it out. It's right here, that eye. And uh, I like that it's right on that third. Uh, next month in August, uh, World Lions Day in 10th of August, and World Elephants Day in 12th of August. Have uh, any ideas on making drawings and paintings on that? Day? I'm sure I will. I just don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. But yes, I'm sure we will. So once again, I'm just going to... Get some uh, of these drawings in here, here. Uh, will you add even uh, more sketching brushes for your set of brushes for Procreate? Yes, we'll be doing all of that. I was about to ask if you've been enjoying uh, the storms out here in Florida lately. Managed to see a rainbow cloud the other day. Oh, uh, the other day. At the other day. After one of them uh, was really beautiful. Yeah, we get a lot of great rainbows here in Florida. Yeah, I love the, thun the, the thunder. That's my and the favorite lightning. thing. The light. Before the thunder. <laughs> uh, but um, man, my favorite thing about storms is is thunder. Although it's also scary, not because it's so loud and everything, but when I'm playing my games or while I'm working, thunder usually means power outage half the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You okay? Yeah, I was listening to your goofy laugh. <laughs> I think we lost Nick. Nick, don't do the thing. So I'm really digging the um, these shadow shapes. I haven't done an elephant. I, I, I don't think I've done an elephant in over a year. I mean, I really, you know, sat down and rendered one out. Cass says, I have your previous World Lion Day painting print in my office. That, I love that. Oh, by the way, that's the other thing we'll have. We'll have a whole bunch of prints uh, available at the, uh, at the uh, master class as well. A whole bunch of prints? Like live music? Yeah, prints. Yeah, yeah live prints. music prints. Prints, yeah. yeah. Artists formerly known as. Prince. Yeah. Have you ever gone to see a rainbow cloud? Uh, yes, I have. It's formed by ice crystals. Way up high. Way up high. Way up high. Simba. Remember who you are. I can never do that. That voice. James Earl Jones? Yep. We showed, I, I think I've told this story, I'm sure I have told this story. We showed James Earl Jones uh, yeah. the scene of his character dying in Lion King when, you know, way back in 1993 when he came to the studio. Mark Henn, who actually animated the shot, and I uh, were touring him and his wife around and we brought them back to editorial and we showed them the scene turn the lights out and and he had recorded it but he had never well he didn't record the 
the scene where Simba's trying to wake him up because there's nothing to record. But, um, but he had never seen it. And uh, we played it for him and we brought the lights up and James Earl Jones was, this is Darth Vader, man. You got to remember this. This is oh, Darth yeah. Vader. Darth Vader was crying his eyes out. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Uh, how many elephants have you drawn? Uh, uh <laughs> well, <laughs> thousands. I would, I would, I could easily say thousands, because I would, you know, when I was directing, when I was directing the movie uh, The Legend of Tembo, which I'm going to be pitching, by the way. Uh, that's the movie I'm going to be pitching for everybody. Um, uh, when I was directing that, uh, I did a lot of design work up front as well. Plus, I was storyboarding. So I would say easily thousands of elephants. I drew thousands of elephants just on that alone. Uh, Twitch comment. Brother Bear is my favorite movie. I'm so glad I made it to a stream. Greek Al. Right on. I'm happy you made it as well, brother. Or sister. I don't know. Whichever. Dan says, we had a sinkhole at our zoo here. They blamed oh. it on the wet winter we had, but I think they just didn't want the pregnant elephant to feel bad. <laughs> she, <laughs> she should be having her baby any day, if not already. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Have you ever seen a moon rainbow? I have. Once again, that's ice crystals as well. Interesting. Yep, formed by ice crystals. Way up high in our atmosphere. Have no fear. Will Billy Osbrook also be there on 4th of August in Orlando? Who? Billy Osbrook. I think he's a... Uh... Is someone trying to... Is someone trolling us again? No, no, I think... I, I think I was making the joke of... I think he... Going along with my Prince joke, maybe. Oh. YouTube question. Is there any way you could show your reference image? Yes. Here's my reference image right here. Lawrence says, uh, Mufasa was my first movie death I, I seen. Four or five years old screaming. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty traumatic. My first one was... Um, was Old Yeller. And for those youngsters, for you youngsters out there, Old Yeller uh, came out in I think the mid 60s. Uh, I saw it in the early 70s at the drive-in with my father, my parents. I was sitting on my father's lap and uh, when it got to Old Yeller dying, oh my god, I cried my eyes out. It was horrible. That traumatized me. I don't remember what my first movie death but I, I think it was Lion King uh, as well. well one thing I've got wrong here definitely wrong his uh, his head should be a lot higher along with this ear uh, what are the benefits of renewing regular membership this year this next year well we've got a lot of new stuff coming out new courses you know, that's the goal. I mean, that's the whole reason we want people to renew their memberships is that we're going to be adding courses all the time. Um, we're also going to be adding live streams, uh, exclusive live streams that we're going to do. I'll be doing a lot more of this year. Um, and uh, members will have first access to those. Um, but we got a lot more brushes coming out. We've got the biggest thing is courses. We're going to have so many more courses. We're, we got a lot of friends. Um, I've got a lot of friends in the industry that uh, that you guys have seen their work over the years. You just didn't realize what you were looking at. Uh, editors, uh, visual development artists, uh, sculptors, all kinds of stuff that we're going to be uh, getting courses from. So that's our goal in the next year. Sorry, I'm trying to go through the schedule in my head and draw at the same time. I'm struggling a little bit. Sounds like fun. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hello from Sweden. I hello. saw on Proko's YouTube channel your studio tour, and I noticed that you are using ballpoint pen for some of your drawings, and I wonder what kind of ballpoint pens you're using. Uh, just Bic. Just regular Bic. Bic? Like 
25 cent Bic pen. They're really, really good. And one of the great things about Bic pens, they're so cheap, um, but they, you know, they're waterproof. You can do watercolor over the top of them. Uh, there's a lot of great aspects to them. There we go. So I've got the drawing in. Kind of liking that. I'm liking that <clears throat> the composition overall, the negative space as opposed to the positive space, which is the elephant himself, plus the way it breaks up, uh, the, sh the shadow shapes break everything up. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a layer underneath our rough drawing, which I'm going to knock back a little bit more, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do the thing? I'm going to do the thing. Do the thing. So now I'm going to jump over to my texture brushes right here. I'm going to go back to that 20, was it 28 that I liked? Or was it 24? One of them. All of them, maybe all of the above. I'm going to go to 24 real quick and just see. That one's lagging a little bit. Oh, I know why. This whole thing is, a, this image is really big. I made it too big. I don't need it to be 24. I'm going to make it 18. That's just massive. Yeah. It was a little bit ridiculous. Ridiculous. There we go. Much better. There we so go. So this is the brush I'm going to be using. You can see that texture is really nice. And I don't care if it runs out off the edges. I'm just really quickly going, and you can see I've blown up the, the brush really big and it doesn't lag. Very nice. We have no new questions yet. That's okay. That gives me time to get get this in. Really just want to lay this in really quick. Because I'm going to start laying in uh, other colors within the, the local color. So I'm just laying in local color right now. And this is just the first layer. Just the first layer. We're doing membership. Memberships are for a year, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if you're not a member, if you're if you're just now hearing about our membership, we offer a membership on our website, creatureartteacher.com. They're good for a year, and it gives you access to everything. So you're basically buying everything on the site, and then anything new that comes out during that year, you get that as well. There we go. So right now I'm just gonna lay in some of this. Oops. Yeah, the anatomy of an elephant's head has always been a struggle for me, trying to get get it to look proper between trunk, mouth, and tusks. Yes, there is one of the things about the tusk. Always remember uh, on an elephant is the tusk goes right up to the eye. You can follow it right up to the eye. So if you have that tusk pointing in any other direction, it's going to be wrong. Let me give you a quick elephant drawing lesson. Just that elephant shape really quick. So if you look at an elephant's head, a, an Asian elephant, I'm not, I'm sorry, an uh, African elephant. Um, let me do this. There we go. It's really, it's, um, it's got this kind of shape to it. This is the female. So you got a nice hard jaw right here. Comes up. The eye is about halfway down, just 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 under halfway down, like so. Off of that eye is that cheekbone. There's a very prominent cheekbone that comes off of here. And off that eye ridge, there's a big kind of dent right there. Now coming off the eye in this direction, if I draw a line right from the eye out, that's your tusk line. So and the tusk comes down 
and it wraps around in this way, like so. And you can have the tusk coming off. And tusks can be a, an infinite number of shapes and lengths and everything else. Your ear opening is right here. And then the ear itself comes out like so. And not more often than not, you can see that other ear on the other side, the bottom of it. Okay? These are the, that's the basic shape. And then if it was a male, it would be coming back like so. Like that. That's the male head shape right there. So if I erase this, now I'm drawing a male elephant's head. And ma the big males, the big tuskers, they get huge. Absolutely huge. So here is our the, the cheekbone, and it goes right into the tusk. Like so. Now you've got a lot of muscle right here, so you'll, you'll see some different bulging of, of muscle, and you can get you know, different shadows and that sort of thing. The, the uh, lip comes off of here. There's usually a lot of little hairs sticking off of that lip. And then the trunk comes down. It comes out and then breaks right there. Okay? So that, if I shrink that up, You got a trunk that comes down like so. Now, you've got a shoulder blade. The shoulder blades are here. And then there's a big hump on the back. Right here. And then the rest of the body, the neck comes back. Actually, you can probably show a little bit more of the neck coming off that ear. The rest of the body comes back like so. Okay? Whereas on Asian elephants, this is a big round shape, like a, like a, a bean. But on, on uh, African elephants, you've got the, the shoulder blades and you've got the back hump. I've got a bunch of questions coming up on Nick's thing, but Nick, I'll, sh I'll answer them in just a second. And then here, their elbow tends to be really low, way down here. And it locks out in order for them to support their weight. And the foot basically flattens out, but there's a little bit more in the front than there is in the back. Now if you were to cut through and see, and see the bones inside, they're actually standing up on their fingers, but that's all covered in uh, fatty tissue that uh, cushions their walk. Okay? So their, sh their shoulder blades are in here like so, and it com comes through to their, to their shoulder, which is there, and then comes down to their elbow, and comes down like so. And if we got the other foot here, we'd have something that looks like this, like that. And then back here, their knees come way down, and you get the, the wrinkles kind of have a funky direction right there. The knees come down, and they, they walk on their heel just like we do. Just like so. And fail. Okay, so there's a quick African elephant demo for you. Cool. Twitch question, you said you're going to pitch Legend of Tembo. Can you talk more about that? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to be I'm going to be pitching uh, some uh, earlier versions of the film when we were making it, and uh, I want to talk about the main the main drive of of doing that is to show you know how we structure our stories and how we um how and how we perform in, you know during a pitch. Because a pitch is a performance, and uh, that's that's the biggest thing I want you to understand is is that a a pitch really is a performance. There we go. I heard you saying the live stream. Uh, you'll have a bunch of prints to buy uh, at your master class. 
But will you also be putting up new prints on your website? Yes. We're going to have new prints on the website coming up at some point soon. And we'll have them at the, at the, uh, at the master class as well. I just want to make sure that people that attend the master class have a little bit of an advantage. 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 advantage and uh, can get some exclusive stuff. YouTube question here, and I was go. Uh, I go drawing at the zoo a lot. Are there methods of drawing that could give me a greater understanding of the animal, or should I just keep? Or should I just keep drawing as usual? You know, there's a lot of just study. I mean, there's so much stuff on the internet as far as being able to find information on different animals and that sort of thing. Um, uh, studying the anatomy and understanding it before you go to the zoo is one of the things I always recommend to people. Uh, getting to understand, you know, the, the way they're put together and, and all of that really does help. Before, and, and then when you go to the zoo, um, one of the biggest things, I'm going to back up a little bit, one of the biggest things that helps me is understanding comparative anatomy. Understanding where the different parts are on your body compared to the parts on the animal's body. And the reason that helps is once you understand those relationships, then you can say, oh, that's an arm. And an arm has this muscle, and and you know that's the equivalent, or, or that's the equivalent of having an arm, you know, on a certain animal. And so those types of understandings really help. So right now I'm just I'm still just doing local color. I'm using my texture brush that I, I created in the new brush pack, and you can see it creates a nice a nice texture that I'm really. I can get really subtle with some of these colors. I'm really just working in grays, warm grays and cool grays. Uh, Larry asks, have you ever been to the Knoxville Zoo in Tennessee? I don't think I have. No. 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 I know you just did the... We, uh, we're currently wrapping up on the uh, perspective course, but any ideas on your next course? Yeah, so we had been talking about a Birds of Prey course, um, and I'm still working on getting that out. Uh, we just stalled on it because I really I realized I could get the, the uh, to be honest with you, I realized I could get the, the perspective course out a little quicker. And so I chose to jump over to that uh, just because uh, I could. But we do plan on um, making a Birds of Prey course. So we are doing the Birds of Prey course for sure, yes. Absolutely. So once again, I'm still just working out that local color. Have you ever used a Corel Painter instead of Photoshop to paint digitally? Yes, I've used Corel Painter quite a bit. It's just that I've you know I've used Photoshop so much. Um, it's just it's my go-to. I'm just comfortable with it. I don't like jumping around from different. Uh, different softwares for me I like I try to do the same thing my method I keep my method the same no matter what I do and the reason for that is it enables me to get my work done very quickly if I need to especially if I'm working freelance and because when you're switching from one software to another constantly it's constantly changing the layout yeah and just starts. your approach and all of that and it just yeah. I have a certain way that I approach my work, and so this helps me uh, do that by you know doing it the same way. Twitch comment: I saw a photo of an elephant queen. It had tusks down to the ground. Yes, that was a that's an elephant I believe that's in Kenya, and uh, she was absolutely in uh, just she's just a beautiful elephant. So I'm going to put a layer on top, and I'm going to set this to multiply. And um, I'm going to grab a nice warm gray, a little bit mid-tone, and I'm going to go into our shadow areas with my texture brush, just a little bit. Do you plan to appear at any upcoming conventions or expos? Um, I, the next one we're going to be at is Lightbox. And that's in September, correct? That is in September, eight, uh, 6th, 7th, and 8th, I think, or something like that. Um, 
and that's going to be in Pasadena, California. Nice. So here I'm just going through and looking at the shadow patterns, and I'm once again I'm really liking this this texture. And one thing I can do, you know, if if you find like some of the texture I'm feeling is a little bit even large, you can adjust these brushes. So I, all I have to do is come over here, and uh, and just change the size. Oh, actually this one right there it is. No, that's not the one I wanted. It's on the texture section. If I change the scale just a little bit under texture, there. I can come back. And now I've got a texture brush. I've just changed the scale of the texture on the brush. So now that texture is a little bit tighter. I kind of like that. So I can go, oh, I like that. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to here and I'm going to save that. And I'm going to call that texture. Whoops. Textured. Uh, what do I have? I'm going to call it 38. I think, do I have 38 in there already? I don't think I do. Oh, I do. I'll call it uh, 39. I've got three. I'm gonna go forty-one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, forty-one. Forty-one. <laughs> forty-one. Do you have a favorite place in the world for drawing from life? Uh, well, in Florida, I don't have a. I don't know if I have a favorite place in the world, but I definitely have places all over that I love drawing from life. I love um, going to a little place here in Florida called Merritt Island, um, which is. Um, well, specifically in Merritt Island, there's a place called Blackburn Point Road. And uh, it's just, it's a beautiful haven for uh, migrating birds. And so sitting there with binoculars and painting is just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> just came home, started the live stream, heard weird noises in the background and thought, Yeah, Dustin is back! <laughs> <laughs> Twitch question. There is a Smaugest drawing challenge on Twitter right now. Would you, would you, what, would I, what? Would you illustrate a dragon for the next live stream? Uh, I could do that, yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. cool. Uh, which animal have you drawn the most in your career? I'd have to say lions or bears. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. How long does it take to animate a three-minute film? Oh, it would take me probably about four months. What is a multi-plane camera? Multi-plane camera is the use of um, basically you're you're taking different planes within your background. You know, distant background. Let's say foreground and. And mid, our middle ground and foreground, there's three different planes right there. Then you can break it up into even more planes than that. And um, it's a, you are um, taking those planes and spreading them out so that you get distance, oh. perceived distance. And if you look at Bambi, Bambi uh, would really used the multi-plane camera really well, especially in the, the first forest, to use it? in the forest shots. What's that? Wasn't it the wasn't Bambi the first one to use it? Uh, I'm not sure. It could be. I know they use the heck out of it in, in uh, um, uh, Fantasia. Yeah. Yeah, because the... Um, I got a YouTube question. If you had one month to learn something new and get really good at it, what would it be? Uh, uh, Learning to roll your R's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be good. <laughs> Jerk. Um, I would something sports related because then I uh, I can get back in shape. Let's say just say CrossFit. I was I've been reading. Uh, no, I know I, I I hate CrossFit, but I've been reading about it lately, and I'm actually getting interested in it. 
I'm a big fat old man, but man, I I think CrossFit's kind of cool. We kind of there's a lot of CrossFit people I don't like, put it that way. <laughs> but I think it can be kind of fun. But uh, uh, getting back to wakeboarding too, I would love to get back to wakeboarding. That would be fun. Yeah, because I'd like to get a lot more of the aerials. I used to do some aerials, but not very well. And uh, to be able to get back to that would be a blast. Just need a ride with Rob Reed. Yeah. James on YouTube says, greetings from Namibia. Oh, my gosh, man. That's one of my dream places to go. Where? I want to go to the Skeleton Coast, Namibia. Oh, man, the, the, the red elephants there. and Oh, just everything is so beautiful. Anyway, uh, there aren't any animation schools here. It's videos like yours that gives me inspiration for being an animator and a better artist. Thank you. Well, maybe one day I can come to Namibia and we can meet up because I would... Namibia is one of my dream places to go. I've been to Kenya, Tanzania, and, uh, and then uh, and that's it in those areas. And I want to explore more of Africa. And Namibia is just so awesome. So here I'm laying in shadow shapes with my texture brush set on multiply. Oh, Tim Hodge correct. Uh Correct about the multiplane. Uh, the old mill was the first use of multiplane. Oh, that's right. Uh, they I used that extensively actually. on Snow White in 1937. Thank you, yeah. Tim Hodge. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Tim is way better at it than me. <laughs> the uh, the history stuff. Yeah, I didn't know they used the multiplane on uh, Snow White. I thought multiplane was after Snow White. Yeah, I did too, actually. Hi there, and I am in Ohio. <laughs> Ohio? Ohio. 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 It's round in the beginning, high in the middle, round on the end. <laughs> to help people understand that everything is possible, could you make a live stream with paint? With like paint? Oh, like oil paint? Oh, just traditional oil? media? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I could do that. So there's our rough layout for the elephant and rough shadow. I'm going to go into the background now. And we're going to go back to our textured brushes. There we go. Uh, will there be bird skulls involved in the uh, uh, Birds of Prey course? Yes. Yes. really digging these textured brushes these are like I said these are the ones that are available on my site and uh, man I'm loving how they're working just laying I'm very roughly laying in a background so that I can start uh, working that out and somebody else probably forgot to uh, add in the uh, the reddish brown color of the elephant's eye no it's in shadow I didn't forget anything. Uh -huh. I never forget. I'm like an I elephant. I never forget. But I might put it in anyway just because I like the glow of that eye. So I'm just laying in texture right now. It's going to... Uh, I want it to be fairly simple. Roy on YouTube says, I picked up, I picked the Cintiq 16 because of your, your review and so far has uh, enjoyed it. So I'm glad you've enjoyed it <laughs> based on my review. I'd hate, it, I'd hate it otherwise if you didn't. little bit of a little bit more texture back there do you ever do any work with procreate uh, not much a little bit and I'm gonna be doing some procreate uh, courses once I get a better handle on it and uh, um, so the there yeah so that's that 
So I'm going to go in here now, I'm going to put another layer on top and I'm going to set that to overlay and I'm going to hit with my texture brush again. Um, I'm going to go in and get some textures. Let me see here. I want to try, which one was it? By the way, don't forget to save. Save as Elefante. Elefante. Never forget to save your work. Stay safe, my friends. Um, Twitch question. Could you briefly explain how the Blair blending options work, such as multiply? Well, yes, absolutely. That's a, a, that would be a pleasure. So let's say I'm going to show you with this with my big big round brush. Multiply, if I, I'm going to create a new layer, set it to multiply. Multiply literally takes the color that you have and it multiplies with all the other colors underneath. So if I take this current color that I have, which is kind of a light color, even though it's light, it's multiplying with the colors underneath and it comes out dark. But watch as I draw across. You can see it's multiplying with every other color on the screen. And what's great about multiply is that I can use it to create shadows very easily because it's 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 not painting opaquely it's op it's painting uh, first of all dark but it's bringing in the color that's underneath and creates wonderful shadows in that way. Overlay does the opposite it brightens everything. And so those those are the only two that I re really use other than uh, color dodge which will really burn in an area, brighten it up a lot, make it really bright as if it's taking a big glare. Uh, but multiply is the one I use the most out of everything, and that is to create shadows. But right now, like I said, I've got overlay, and I'm going to go in and just create some warm, some warm areas using some different textured brushes. There we go. I don't really understand the skeletal structure of the chin of an elephant. Could you explain that to us? Yeah, the chin of I don't like that. The chin of an elephant, um, they've got a jawbone just like we do, okay? Um, but they, it, come, it comes together really tight. If I draw... Let me turn these off. So if we draw an elephant, let's say that we're looking at it from the front, uh, from the front three quarter, let's say. So we've got a dent here, dent comes down here, eye, eye, there's an eye socket, and there's a big cheekbone that comes down here like so, okay? And then here, we've got those big tusks. Remember they go right up to the eye. Come out this way and this way. Trunk comes down like so. Okay. So what happens is the jaw is right there. It comes in It's and it comes to, if I draw through, it comes to a point. If I were to draw on the other side, if I'm drawing through the elephant, the jaw looks like uh, I'm trying to remember here. It comes down like this. It's a big heavy jaw here. And then you got grinding teeth here. And then it kind of comes to a point right there. And I'll draw it in three quarter. And it comes up like so. The teeth, grinding teeth there. And that's how the jaw sits right up inside here. Like so. And then we got ears. The ears come back. They look like the continent of Africa. Like so. Okay? Hope that makes sense. But that jaw sits right there. If I'm drawing through, it comes comes in. The, the lip, the lower lip comes to a point. Oops. What's the, there it is. So now I want to get back to creating... My high, highlight areas. I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my my sketching brush. This one right here. 
I'm going to use that to, to start pulling in. Uh, what's this one? Oh, that's that. Okay. I'm going to do this one, overlay. So I'm going to start using it to pull in some of these highlights. I'm going to make it a little grayer. I don't want it to be too warm yet. Justin on YouTube uh, asks, have you heard of the Ulame River? It's a great place to kayak and draw. I have not heard of the Ulame River. Actually, I want to go a little bluer. Is there a special reason why you picked uh, green as your background? Uh, there's green in the background. Of, I want it to feel like it's lush foliage. There's green in the background on the image I'm looking at. I might change it. And, and, and the the elephant is basically reddish and you know in the in the gray tones so I wanted to go with something that was a bit more uh, complimentary have you ever had to take legal action for uh, for someone pirating your artwork if so what were the steps you took and uh, or what is your process to protect your work uh, no I've never taken any legal action and I don't really worry about it. I don't really have a problem with people pirating my work. Uh, we have a little bit, in, you know, in Asia here and there, and in Russia, but not enough that it really bugs me. It's not. It's not like it's taking food out of my mouth or anything like that. So it's not. If we had more of a problem with it, I'd be more concerned. But um, but we don't really. Not too much. Uh, Granted B on YouTube says, Hello from South Carolina. I'm a 67-year-old fine artist switching to digital painting. I love your demos. I have Photoshop and a large size movable screen to work on. Learning a lot from you. Granny B, that makes me very, very happy. Wonderful. Maybe we can meet someday. You're not that too you're not too far away. So I'm really having fun. So now you can see, with uh, you know, as I'm going in with my lighter overlay uh, colors, uh, I'm starting to pull out some of the some of the modeling, some of the light and dark. I've already got the shadow layer in. Now it's time to pull in some of these light area textures. And that's working pretty well. Nick says the Alume River Wildlife Sanctuary is on Merritt Island. I've never even heard of it. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go check it out. I spent all my time at Blackburn or Black Point Road. So I'm trying to stay very loose here. Uh, Dwayne asks, how would you create the same multiply effect when painting traditionally? Blessed love. Thanks, man. Um, well, it, it's easier to, it's not, it's not easy to do in oil. Um, there are transparent uh, mediums that it's a lot easier to do, like watercolor. You can glaze a color over an area that's been painted and the area that's underneath will show through. That's how I do a lot of the shadows in my watercolor paintings. Um, when I'm painting an oil or acrylic, I tend to be more opaque. So it's a little bit of a different approach in that way. Uh, but when I'm doing watercolor, it's very much like my digital approach Because I'm letting the color underneath shine through and it multiplies with the color that I'm I'm laying on top Have you drawn a uh, Summa Sumatran tiger Sumatran? Sumatran. Sumatran. Uh, no, I, I never have They also wrote uh, in there, I just love how different their faces are compared to other species. I just pronounce it Sumatran? Sumatra. Sumatra. From Sumatra. Sumatra. Where is Sumatra? It's near Malaysia and all that. Uh, oh, I lost, I, I see the Black Point Wildlife Drive. And then there's the Ulume Wildlife Sanctuary. So it's a little bit further down. It's an hour further south. I'm going to go check that out. Let's go check it out, Nick Birch. 
Earlier you mentioned uh, Merritt Island. I've been there and it's beautiful. Are you near there? Uh, I live about an hour from Merritt Island. Oh, I'm still in the blue. I want to get warm again. Aaron, do you do fishing and so are you drawing them? Like, it's... And if you do, are you, are you drawing fish? No, I don't fish very much. I used to fish with my father, uh, my stepfather, who was a captain. Uh, but since he passed, uh, that was kind of the thing he and I did together. And uh, so I don't really fish anymore. To be honest with you, I have a hard time fishing because I, I really don't like hurting the fish. <laughs> Or when you, you and I fished when I was little. Yep, when Dustin was little, we would fish on the backyard, uh, catch a little brim and bass and things like that. And what did you do each time you put, let the fish go? I would, I would throw it. No, you wouldn't <laughs> throw it. You gave it a kiss. You gave every fish a kiss before you sent it back. You're a very sweet little boy. So here I'm just finding all my little highlight areas. And then I'm going to start painting opaque over the top with my texture brushes. Learning Cure on YouTube says, Greetings from Kuwait. Don't bother, bother visiting here as due to the heat, 122 in summer. You know, I was in 122 degree heat one time in, in the southwest U.S. And I don't think I ever want to go through that again. Yeah, that's a no uh, thank you. There are basically no animals ex except for tiny little lizards. That makes sense. Yeah. John on YouTube says, multiply equal tint with watercolor, add equals gouache. Yeah, very good. Absolutely. Have you ever seen a giant panda? Yes. Not in the wild. I've seen them in the zoo. Just creating some texture, keeping it really loose. There we go, that's feeling pretty good. Nick says, I can take or leave the fishing, but I love that it seems to be the only time it's successful, <laughs> acceptable to drink before sunup. <laughs> There's truth in that. YouTube comment, next time, next live stream, draw Dustin kissing a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Where's that picture of you and I sitting on the dock where you're really small? Oh. Do you have that on your phone? Oh, Vedanta pulled it up last night. Oh, you got it already? Go to the... Can you see it? Yeah. So there's Dustin and I, about 25 years ago, sitting out on our dock in the backyard fishing together. He used to sit on my lap and we'd catch fish, and then he'd throw them back. It's a pretty cute little photo. He's got his little Fisher Price fishing rod. <laughs> Can you see it? Yep. Aww. Everyone's gonna go, aww. Cute. So now I'm gonna go back in again 
with set to multiply again. And I'm going to go in with my sketching brush so I can get a little bit more detailed. And I'm really going to hit some of these details. In the uh, around the eye and oh, I want to go dark. What are the important careers at Disney now and in the future? What are the important careers? Important careers, like oh, and depends on what you consider important. I mean, somebody that is a you know that drives a bus, you know, that they might consider that important, so I'm not sure what you mean by what are the important careers. Uh, I think I think we need to ask is what what you're doing and if they are hiring that career in that in that No, they're not hire, not what I'm doing. And they're not really yeah. doing 2D animation no, no, what, anymore. I was talking about the person that asked that question. Like, he needs to figure out what he wants to do oh. as a career and see if Disney is opening up for that career. Yeah, you know that's I mean? a good piece of advice. So. Jamie on YouTube says, Hey, Aaron, I recently did your human anatomy and bear courses, and they are absolutely amazing. Took my art to a whole new level. Definitely going to save up for the big cats one. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, remember, if you become a member, you'll get all of them. You'll get every single course on there. I know it's a little bit more than one course at a time, but uh, in the long run, it'll save you some bucks. How much do you draw in your sketchbook at the moment? How much do I draw? A lot. A lot, 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 lot. A lot, 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 lot. A lot, 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 lot. That's a lot. My ear's hot. It's hot. really enjoying these new texture brushes. Holy moly. I should have done this a long time ago. They really, especially for like this elephant, they're really giving, you know, I can see all this texture really gives it a nice look. I'm digging that. Yeah, I've just shown that fishing picture. I'm looking at all my other pictures now. Oh yeah, I like which one? This one. Like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> So like this, how, how, this what, is what happened to me? somehow along the way. See, Dustin used to be a little angel. Not anymore. And <laughs> he looked like a little angel. And I don't know what happened in the last 28 years. This is Dustin 28 years ago. Flip it to the, flip it horizontally. Oh. There you go. Can you see that? It's a little dark. It's trying to auto adjust the darkness, but or the brightness, but is it fixing it? It's the best we're gonna get. But you can still you can see it. Cute little Dustin. I don't know what happened. Uh, can you show us your sketchbook? We have more than one. Oh, I've got tons of sketchbooks. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this elephant first. I don't want to break off too much, but I've done. I've done a. If you go to Proko's page, um, I've got a whole sketchbook tour with him. Plus, on my YouTube channel, there we uh, Nick, uh, Dustin, and I did some sketchbook tours as well. We go over some of my sketchbooks. I went from all that to this. <laughs> yeah, that was a, <laughs> this. This is one where I did separated at birth. This is the Bigfoot from the Six Million Dollar Man back in the 70s, and then Dustin. Not too much of a difference. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, even now I'm kind of that just a little more cleaned up. I'm 
just creating some texture in that nose. Or maybe they switched him at the hospital. <laughs> Was that Jon Snow? Question for Dustin. Uh, okay. Dustin, are you always expected to be able to draw from your from your friends? Uh, how? Uh, uh, basically, how have I been inspired by by your just been just over time getting getting sick over the art? I've actually been really enjoying art. And um, I've actually started getting to photography and using that as my medium of art currently. Um, I used to sketch back in high school and I make logos here and there, but no one, no one of my friends never really pushed me into, into art. I was never with, with the artist group. Um, I was more into like the video game and anime group, but I just like drawing a little bit here and there and they just kind of gave pointers on like how my designs were but but yeah i've never been never been sick of art i've always enjoyed art just not in my dad's sort of way but i've always wanted to follow his footsteps in my own way so hope that explains hope hope that was the right answer or not you know what i mean so i'm just going in and darkening these nice deep shadows now with that overlay. Are you working with the layer set to multiply or the brush itself? I'm, I'm working with the layer set to multiply. Are you gonna uh, participate in the Share Inktober sketches this year? Probably. I probably work, yeah. It depends on uh, our work schedule, but yeah, probably. Oh, you know what? Probably not, actually. Nick and I are going to be in Africa in, in, uh, in October. Uh, for a good chunk of the month. Where are you going to be in October? Africa. We're going to oh, be in right. Kenya. Is that Vedantai here? No? Okay. I guess it's not. Dustin, what's your favorite Disney live action remake? Hmm. I would say the one I've watched so far, uh, Beauty and the Beast. And at first I was rather against it because it just felt so different. But when I started th uh, seeing it as its own movie, I started enjoying it more. So yeah, Beauty and the Beast is my favorite live action remake. Tavadanta? I heard you say my name. Yeah. I was wondering if you, what you were doing, if you want to come in and say hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm watching on the back porch. Oh no, I'm commenting. Oh. Love you. Love you. I wonder where Dustin's closet is. Um, it's in my room, in my apartment, that is around the corner. Uh, do you like soft pastels? Uh, it's messy, isn't it? I've never used soft pastel. I mean, I've used them a little bit, but not really, not much since college. So I don't really have enough experience uh, in them. Yes, it, it is messy. Uh, I'd love to do more, but I've never really used them to, to judge them one way or the other. Uh, Dustin, have you seen My Hero Academia? And if you do, you watch it in sub or dub? Um, I watch mostly in dub. Um, I rarely ever watch an anime in sub because I usually have the show playing in the background, like hearing what everyone's saying. And it, 
only a really good anime will uh, that has like a good story and everything will will I actually sit and watch with the subtitles and everything. Usually though, I watch with dub, and it doesn't bother me at all. I like it. So what do we got here? The Dustin Show. What's going on? <laughs> well, Aaron danced with the Maasai. Oh, I have already. I've danced with the Maasai. And it was awesome. There we go. Uh, no, I have not seen the new Lion King yet. Dad has. I have not. I did see the new Lion King, yes. Uh, I wonder what between lightning and shading gives... Or not... I think you meant to say light, lighting, not lightning. Uh -huh. um, I wonder what between lighting and shading gives the most depth when drawing. Well, if you light something, you're automatically creating the shadow side as well, despite the fact that you're not hitting it with light. And if you put shadows in, you're automatically lighting it as well because you're not putting shadows where there's light. So you can't do one without the other. Um, so to me, it's 50-50. It says, would love to see Aaron do a pastel painting. How's it feel to want? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to do it as well. Maybe we'll do that live. We should do something like that live where I, I, I don't have any, any experience in a, in a medium. And you guys can see me fumble through it just like anybody else would. I think that would be cool. How much time should I draw to improve my skill? Seven. Seven. Seven hours a day. <laughs> you do as much as it takes. There's no hard number. As much as it takes. <clears throat> so whatever happened to Legend of Tembo? Is it postponed or canceled? It was bought out of bankruptcy. Uh, it's in a. It's dead. It was taken by a studio in China, who has since gone bankrupt, as well, or taken over, or whatever. I'm not sure what's happened to them. Uh, but it's dead in the water. Manny asks, "Has Aaron stepped in stuff in Yellowstone National Park?" <laughs> You know that I have, baby. <laughs> What'd you step in? Big pile of buffalo poop. Nice. <laughs> it was still wet. Ooh, fresh. Yeah, it was still wet. <laughs> Man, he's got it on video, so he knows. Oh, he does, does he? Yes. I wonder if he'll ever post it. <laughs> I think he did post it. Did he? Yeah. Did you, Manny? All right, so I've got my light areas kind of, or dark areas mapped out here. It's a little, it's feeling a little monochromatic. I want to get some more color in here. Aaron should watch Avatar just so he can do a live stream, uh, live stream painting a sky bison. Ooh. I don't know what a sky bison is, but it sounds cool. Oh, that Avatar, not James Cameron's Avatar, the uh, the oh. animated series Avatar. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so now I'm going to put a layer on top, and I want to start working opaque. Once again, this is my sketching brush that's available on my website. Uh, and I'll, to get it, all you got to do is sign up for my newsletter. Just 
want to work the detail into this eye, but at the same time keep it loose, keep it tight. A bit of a rough finish, but this is what they were talking about uh, of a sky bison. Oh, that's cool. That's a neat animal. Yeah. Amunal. 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 And he flies too. And it's sky bison. <laughs> it's sky bison. And it's sky bison. Twitch question. Do you use uh, any jitter in your brushes? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Uh, YouTube question. Uh, if I have to play Pictionary, would you be part of my team, please? <laughs> sure, that'd be fun. Believe it or not, I don't always win at Pictionary because I tend to get really into the drawing. And I lose because of, I'm slow. Sometimes I get a, uh, I'll get a little faster if I can get loosened up. Have you used blending brushes during this stream? No. No, I have not. Question. Uh, when that African elephant chased you down, uh, did it feel like that scene in Jurassic Park when they were chased by the T-Rex? Yes. <laughs> it absolutely did. YouTube question. Will there be a course on how to draw dinosaurs and dragons? Mm. Well, uh, I've gotten that question before. Giant reptiles, basically. Yeah, I'm. I'm just not. A, I'm not a dinosaur expert. Um, dragons would be fun. I mean, because I, I, I picked up a little bit on reptiles, and I think it could be fun. Yeah, let's say let's just say yes. That's right. The talking about that Jurassic Park scene, I just instantly just started thinking in my head. Must go faster. Must go faster. <laughs> <laughs> Nick says my my favorite was the polar dog from the Legend of Korra. You know what that is, Dustin? What did he say? My favorite was the polar dog from oh, the, the Legend polar of Korra. Oh, the polar dog. Yeah. The polar dog is a really cool animal. I don't know what that is. Oh, he just put, put up a picture. Yeah. Well, it's kind of being hidden behind the... Uh, yeah, it's too big. A whole course on mythical creatures would be cool. Try expanding out the... Um, expanding out the... Uh, no, webpage. I've got the elephant. I'm trying to get to work on the elephant. I'm going to go a little warmer. There we go. I'm getting a little too black and white. I need more color in here. So I'm going to that this is the polar bear dog. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. I like it. Yeah, in the Avatar um, world, they they mix up the different breeds of animals into new species. So I got like the sky bison. You get the polar polar dogs. I can't remember what else is in there. Those are the two main ones. Did you cry watching Dumbo? Yep. Not the new one. I haven't even watched the new one yet. Matter of fact, the the baby mine and the new one, I thought they really missed a an emotional opportunity. It fell flat for me. Will you do an airbrush stream? No, I don't do airbrush. Uh, do you ever miss a drawing that you've made? Do I ever miss it? Yeah. No? Can't think I... Can't say that I have. 
or do. I just do another one. I don't get hung up on my drawings. Have you ever tried doing art with your non-dominant hand? Yeah, it looks terrible. That'd be a really fun, fun challenge to put on video. It would. I think we uh, actually think it'd be a fun idea just making making up fun challenges to to post on YouTube, just random comedy stuff. What do you think? Yeah, on a different channel. <laughs> so it would be fun. Will you guys ever do a workshop in Toronto? Um, I can't say that we have anything planned right now, but I can't see us not doing something in Toronto. I mean, it's a kind of a mecca in Canada for that and... and and uh, um, uh, 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 Vancouver, uh, 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 <laughs> I couldn't couldn't get the word out. It'd be fun to visit uh, Toronto again. Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. I used to live up there in Toronto. Yes, you did, Toronto, for two years. So I want to get I want to get some different color into these darks. I'm going to go, since we've got some, uh, all of our lights are kind of in the warm orange and red gray area, I want to see if I can get some, I want to cool these shadows off and get them a little bit bluer. I'm going to take this, this one and just try to cool it off, see what happens. I'm going to go to hue and saturation. I'm just going to shift the hue. A cooler hue. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Image adjustments, hue and saturation. Shift it to a cooler hue. That feels a little, be a little better for me. I want to go in with some reflected light underneath. I know you don't see it. We don't see it in the reference, but I think it really needs it. Which question, do you think having texture brushes over just the basic round brush that comes with Photoshop makes your art better? No, I don't think that makes your art better. I think practice makes your art better. The texture brushes are there to provide you with abilities that the normal brushes can't give you as far as effects and that sort of thing, but it's not, it's not going to make your art any better if you don't know how to create good art in the first place. So it really comes down to needing to know how to do that first. Have you drawn a shark before? Yes, many sharks. How about uh, sea slugs? The color <laughs> on them are fabulous. <laughs> they are fabulous, but I've n never drawn any sea slugs. Baby shark, dee 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 dee. Baby shark, dee cut. I got it in there, didn't I? I got a new one in my head. I'm blue, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> when will your next live stream be? Are we doing one uh, this Thursday or are you? Uh, probably, yeah. Um, I'm still prepping. I want to make sure that all of my uh, classes are all set for this weekend, which they pretty much are. I'm, I'm already prepared, but. I get very paranoid when it comes time for my uh, lectures and everything because I want to make sure that I have everything perfect for everybody and uh, I just get a little bit uh, I get a little bit um, partic particular particular yes All right, well, if so. you want that we can probably delay the the live stream for next Tuesday so you have the time to prep up. And oh resolve. no, no, you're not going to get out of it that easy. I'm, I was just saying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna, we gotta, definitely want to do it. All right.
Uh, can you do other Disney characters that you haven't designed, like Adult Simba or the Genie? Um, I could. I'd have to sit down and kind of teach myself. And for our previous answer, yes, Toronto, yay! You lived here, Dustin? Nice. <laughs> I did. I, I lived in Toronto for, uh, for two years. I was working in the uh, movie industry. The studio... I was working for originally was in California that's where I was living before but then they moved it up there and I was like well I want to keep my job so went up there for, for a few years so what I'm doing now is I'm going and putting some reflected light giving a little bit more interest to the shadow areas <laughs> Gabby from the trip said Aaron, my daughter is watching with me, and now she's singing the shark song. Baby shark, do 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 do. Stop it! <laughs> stop it right now. YouTube question: Do you think you'll ever come out with short animations every two weeks, a little short story sometimes, like your YouTubers do? Nope. <laughs> nope. I don't think I ever will. Be nice. Be a lot cooler if I did. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> uh, no, I just uh, I uh, I don't have the time for that. I wouldn't be able to do it. If my schedule somehow changed, I'd probably be able to do it. There we go. So getting that, you can see that that subtle extra little bit of reflected light really helps. Do I have a storyboard course? Man, have you been to my website? You obviously haven't. <laughs> Do you have any courses at all? We have we have a great storyboard course by Lyndon Ruddy. Uh, who's a, one of my favorite storyboard artists, which is why we got him. Uh, we work together on several films and uh, he's working up at Blue Sky right now but he put together a really great uh, course on storyboarding for us and um, you can get it right at creatureartteacher.com uh, can you make a live about drawing trees someday can you make a live about drawing trees someday if you mean a live stream yes we could do that uh, do you listen to music when you draw, when you're not streaming? Yes. I absolutely do. All the time. Would you love to work on a Jurassic World movie? Uh, I, no. Never really thought about it, actually. Kind of, it sounds kind of cool. I want to, I want to get back into it. I want to do another 2D film. Full length. So here I'm going in and just adding more, just a slightly brighter reflected light. I'm getting it underneath the tusks here. Dustin, ask your, ask your dad if you ever met Walt Disney. I know the answer, but I just love his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> He's not getting an answer now. <laughs> uh, will will he in the near future do a course on uh, reptiles um, yes but it will be after my birds of prey course Uh, what is your favorite subject or medium, and is there any particular reason why? Um, I don't. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I love. I love traditional. I love digital. It really depends on what my mood is at any given time. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's really hard to say. But I love. You know, I love watercolor. I love. Uh, oil I think of the of the traditional media is I think 
watercolor and oil are probably my favorite. Uh, the necklace of the tooth that you sometimes wear, um, does that have a special meaning or feeling for you? It's just, uh, no, I, I just really like the, uh, I like the, the jewelry. It's a, uh, it's a sperm whale tooth from the 1800s. Um, and I just, uh, I just really like it. Have you ever drawn a bearded vulture? They look like straight up demons. <laughs> they do. Uh, but no, I've never drawn one. <laughs> They're pretty cool looking though. Uh, can you paint a reptile next time in your live video? I could try. There we go, just getting a little bit of variation in these darks. Uh, YouTube question. I'm having trouble giving animals visible emotions when I draw. Any suggestions? You know, that it's just something that uh, if you're looking to anthropomorphize them, wow, I don't know if I said that right. Um, just look at human faces and, and, you know, look at the comparative anatomy between the two and that'll help. But it's just something that it takes practice. It really does. I know it's kind of a tough answer, but it's it really just takes practice. Who thinks that Glenn Keane should direct a 2D movie with Aaron and other amazing Disney artists working on that project? <laughs> I would work on that in a heartbeat. Alright, so I'm going to throw... So we, now you can see, you know, adding that bit of color in the shadow, it really... Let me blow that up. It really gives it some life. You know, you don't want your shadows just to be dark. The, 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 there's color in your shadows. Uh, YouTube question. I have CS4 and feel very limited watching this and, compare, and comparing. Is it worth it to upgrade? I'm a graphic design student starting in the fall. Yes, it is worth it to upgrade. You can't be stuck in CS4 forever. CS4 is old. You can get Photoshop for $10 a month. $10 a month. You can get it. And it's worth it because it's always up to date. Uh, Gabby from uh, uh, from the England trip. Yeah. Uh, wrote Kate for Reels. Uh, Aaron, do you have any advice on how to balance art life with parent life? I have a really hyper babe and trying to sit with her and do art is like impossible. Yeah, adoption. <laughs> <laughs> I can only get in minutes at a time. Meanwhile, I'm itching to get some something substantial in my uh, sketchbook. Uh, you no, know, I did all mine after the kids went to bed. Uh, so that's what I did. Or a little brandy in their bottle. <laughs> no, I don't promote uh, you don't kids do drinking. You do <laughs> no, but uh, no, it's, it is tough. You're right. And uh, it's I, I started my art day outside of Disney, because I would work at Disney all day, um, after the kids went to bed. So that was usually around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, and then that's when I would start. And um, it just depends on how how much energy you've got, because I know after, after handling the kids all day, it's hard to keep that energy up. Just know that there's, uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Though sometimes there might be a train coming. CS4 was released in September 2008. That makes it 11 years old. That's, that is some ancient software. If you're a graphic design student, get up to date. There's no excuse for that. 11 year old software? Yeah, get up to date. Before everyone, anybody starts giving me a hard time about, you know, sometimes it's hard and you know, budgets and all that. You know what? You find a way. If this is your business, this is what you want to do, then you find a way. What's your motivation and goal in art? Uh, I don't know that I have one. I mean, I love teaching art and that, but as far as creating art itself, I literally just create art because I can't not create it, and, it's, and it makes me 
happy when I do it. I, I, maybe that's it. It's happiness. You know, creating art just makes me happy. It's it, it's a it's a wonderful for me just pastime. And it just makes me happy when I do it. So I think that's that's my goal. I'm working right over the the, uh, the drawing layer. What are we doing on time? Oh, we've been at it for two hours. It doesn't even feel like two hours. It feels like one. Let's rotate the image. Not too bad. What I'm, uh, what I'd like to do now, is bring in my my uh, my texture brush, uh, my I'm sorry, my dry brush brush, which is, that's from another set. Uh, we have a whole set of dry brush brushes, and I use this one quite a bit, and it works really great for things like elephant skin and uh, creating bits of texture. Let me create a layer on top. Oh, that's much better. I'm, I'm, oh, that, that, I like that. And I can use it to break, you know, to soften edges. Yeah, I want to soften that edge. go. There we go. There we go. There. Really like the feel of throwing a just a little bit of dry brush on a <clears throat> on a painting. And no new questions rolling through. That's okay. I am perfectly fine. Just sitting here, working out some of these textures. Gotta win the race, gotta win the Lemonade. Yeah, it's time to pull out. Refreshing drinks. Trying to pull out a little bit of your Elvis, are you? Well, I'm trying to keep us entertained for a minute. <laughs> Did you add the reflected light by painting a lighter color on top of the darkened or multiplied layer? Yes. Or by removing some of that layer? No, I, I, I painted opaque over the multiply layer. When arting, you're relaxing and not overthinking things over life. Is that so? Yes. When you're With arting. arting or farting. Arting or farting. <laughs> or People on the other end probably going, <laughs> <laughs> So I 
love going in after the fact and just really roughing things up, like I said, like I'm showing, like I'm doing here, and uh, it really gives it a nice feel. And I want it to feel a little dusty too, not you, Dusty. Not uh, me. No, not you. Okay. I want it to feel a little you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Weird. okay. Weirdo. Uh, please tell me about meeting Mr. Disney. <laughs> Not Walt. Didn't say specifically which Disney. So I'm guessing Roy Disney. Well, the only one I've met is Roy because I'm too young to have met <laughs> Walt. Walt died before I was born. <laughs> Two years before I was born. But I was... I was uh, I was a good acquaintance, I would say, of Roy. Roy used to come into our story room when we were working on Brother Bear. He was a big fan of the film, and uh, and we would hang out and and shoot the breeze. He was a good guy. Uh, painting on the field was was always been your biggest frustration. Uh, I, Painting that well, changing light—that's a tough one. You know, changing light. Uh, you got to paint fast. That's a that's a rather than frustration. I don't know if frustration is the right word. Challenge, I think, is the right word. Uh, what's a pose you always struggle with? I always have issues with big cats snarling. Oh, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I never really see you make. Uh, drawings of action poses with with cats or bears or I anything. do sometimes I like Very I like rare. calm calm poses okay. we're commenting on our on our farts the famous make fart button <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun video to to make it was <laughs> Yeah, it gave that elephant a little bit of color to its eye, a little bit of red. There we go. There we go. YouTube question. Where in Kenya are you going to visit? We are going to the Mara. The Maasai Mara. Have you ever read the Scott Robertson books? If you have, what do you think about them? I have not. I'm sorry. I don't know the Scott Robinson books. Dustin, what's your fav favorite concept for photography? Oh. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, either. Maybe, maybe like what like what kind of photography I like to do? I'll just go with that. Um, I like shooting wild... I've been enjoying shooting wildlife and shooting portraits in that same way where usually when you see portraits it's with a model and the model's been told like where how to pose and everything i personally like shooting portraits naturally like all the photos i took during the um during the england trip with every with everyone doing their artwork all the portraits i never gave them instructions or anything I just let I just let them do their thing and I just took the photos the way that they were and the, the way the lighting was and everything I never brought any extra gear I just used natural light you know I just like try and make make my shots as natural as possible and try and capture it in the most as artistic way as possible and um, okay long-winded I gotta answer a question yeah, yeah. Uh, Twitch question can you show the construction sketch you did for this painting there, so now you can talk. You can keep talking. Oh, oh okay. Kind of lost my train of thought. Um, and my, my bad. Taking the shots of, is one half of the fun. The other half that I like is um, editing the photo because I shoot in RAW and I edit all the photos in a, a Lightroom, in Adobe Lightroom afterwards. And yeah, like I've been having a lot of fun doing all that. So that's my style. Done. So I'm just building the layers back up so you can see what we've done. There's that reflected light. That's where it really pops to life. See how flat and dead it feels without the reflected light? Then you add that reflected light, 
and it really comes to life. And here's adding the, the rough brushwork. Oh, that's just a that's the example. So I want to bring in I want to bring in my uh, reference really quick. Here's the reference. Reference. Over the reference. Let me blow up the reference. And you can see that in the reference, there's not a lot of reflected light. The shadows have gotten very black and very dead. So I, I want you to take this as a lesson to not, once again, not being a slave to your reference. Don't be a slave to your reference. Um, you can do whatever you want. Do what the painting is asking you to do. Don't do what the reference is telling you to do. You are the artist. You can do whatever you want. And so if I want to put a little bit of red in the eye, then I'm going to do that. If I want to put, you know, some reflected green coming off the ground up under the skin, then I'm going to do that. It gives the painting, for me, it gives it a lot more life and interest. And that's where you take it beyond what your reference has done. Okay, so take that as a big example. Whoa, that reference has gotten huge. <laughs> uh Real quick, do you have any artistic YouTubers uh, whom you watch? Proko, I like I like I like Proko a lot, and uh, um, who else? Bobby Chu. Bobby Chu doesn't YouTube that much. Does Manny have a YouTube? Uh, nope. I know he has Facebook. He does, and he, yeah, he does. He does uh, I, watch, I watch Manny on Facebook a lot. Um. Nick, uh, Karen on YouTube asks, do you sometimes give conferences to college students? Do you get invited to colleges to talk about animation? All the time. We do, we mostly do colleges. That's where we mostly do our lectures and we do them all over the world. So if, if you're hinting at wanting to do something like that, um, we, whoops, lost my, we, um, if you contact uh, booking, at Creature Art Teacher, uh, we can talk about it with you. All right, so here I'm just creating some more texture. I want to go back here uh, with a little bit of gray right here, and I just want to kind of smooth out some of the wrinkles that I think have gotten a little too harsh. Uh, the woman that asked earlier about her sixteen-year-old uh, daughter wanted to join. Oh yeah. Um, so Aaron, I I want to sign my daughter up for your master class. Uh, we live in Tampa. Uh, awesome. She's only sixteen, and I need to accompany her. Do I need to buy two passes? Uh, well, call Nick about that, uh, or, or contact Nick. Contact Nick at. Um, uh, Is that would that be a support thing? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, what should it be? Let me see. Uh, Nick, tell us the thing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. We'll have to we'll have to set something up special. Um, but uh, Nick can handle that, and you can get him at support. I would say I'm trying to figure out. Is it so, Nick? Is it support? Okay, yeah. It's it's support at creatureartteacher.com. Thanks. Because I know every time I. I say where to go. Nick tells me to go to. I gave him the wrong information. Yeah. So I want to make sure I gave the right information. So if you contact support at creatureartteacher.com, Nick will be able to help you out with that. Have you, you have you so far used uh, any photos that I've that I've made as reference? Uh, you know, I don't know that I have yet. We we all. Uh, we were thinking about using the deer photo earlier. Yes, I just haven't done that yet. Just haven't done that yet. Uh, Dustin, what's your favorite Star Wars planet? <laughs> Nerds. I love it. Um, I would say Coruscant. Coruscant's my favorite planet. That's my favorite Danish. Oh, no, sorry, that's a croissant. That's croissant. <laughs> Bobby Chu live streams a lot, but they tend to be interviews. That's true. 
Oh, I watched James Gurney. Yes, of course I watched James Gurney. James Gurney is actually one of my favorite artists. Uh, where does your drawings of these live videos end up? In the garbage. <laughs> no, they end up on our on our uh, on our social media. Do you have a personal favorite Disney legend? And if so, who and why? Uh, no. I mean, Glenn Keane is my favorite. You know, it's just he's just a great guy. I don't know about Disney legends. I'm not sure. But Glenn, you know, Glenn really gave me a lot of breaks in my career, helping me out a lot. And uh, I'm forever in his debt. Have you ever started to talk about their favorite Star Wars characters and all that stuff? Nick asks, Dustin, how are the European picks coming along? One of our guests is asking. Um, they're coming along good. I got the... Have you really done anything, really? I've actually gotten all the pictures from uh, Tate and Park done. I just haven't transferred them over to Dolphin yet. And I started working on the day we all went to the falconry. Okay. And so, so I've been working on, on that. But that one is probably the biggest day worth of photos. Because I think that day alone, I took well over 12, 1,300 photos. Okay. So it's going it's going, to, it's going to be a little bit, but should have that done uh, soon. I, I plan on getting back on all that after I'm done working on the uh, perspective course. Because we're going to be sending, sending stuff out to people. Well, yeah. I just need to work on one thing at a time. Unless if you're willing to do overtime. <clears throat> as soon as you're... You want to talk about that? You want to do it live on the air? <laughs> Let's talk about overtime, Dustin. Let's see how often you're si actually doing the 40 hours. <laughs> Can you give critiques at your master class? Uh, it, it, well, that's going to be a hard one because we're going to have uh, several hundred people there. So to give critiques to everybody... Would be really difficult. We, I will be able to talk to people, um, and I will be able to answer questions. Um, giving critiques all the way across the board, I can't guarantee that I'll be able to. So, but I will be, um, but I will be, you know, talking with everybody at some form or another. Did you ever work for George Lucas in your career, or met him? I met him. I met George Lucas. During uh, the making, while we were making Aladdin. As a matter of fact, it was his daughter's birthday, and he asked me to do a drawing of Raja for her, and so I did. Oh, wow. I keep forgetting about that one. Yeah. Uh, do you draw machinery robots? I don't. I'm, I'm terrible at it. I'm really bad at it. I haven't drawn stuff like that in a long time myself. So I think I'm going to go a little darker with the background. It's a little bit darker. I'm going to set it to multiply, actually. I'm going to grab some different textures. Let's see what we got here. Nope. Don't like that. Don't like that. I gotta find. I'm not. I'm not familiar with all these. Uh, with these brushes yet. Actually, I don't want to set that to multiply. I want to set that normal. I'm just gonna. And I'm just gonna go a little darker and grayer with it. if some of these textures work. Uh, that's too much texture. See, I like to experiment. I think I'm just going to go right back to my regular texture brush. The, uh, what is it, 20, 
28? Was it 28? Yeah. Let's knock that, knock that opacity back. There we go. Get a little bit of, oh, let's go back to 41. Where was that? 41 is right there. That's a little bit smaller texture. I want to see how this looks. Have you ever drawn fruits and veggies? <laughs> uh, I think I have. <laughs> it's a funny question. Maybe for some like class project or something? Yeah. So I'm, I'm graying out the background a little bit and darkening it. I'm, I'm wanting the elephant to kind of pop a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go a little lighter down below. Will you do a gouache acrylic painting course after your bird of prey course? Didn't we already do one? We did a watercolor course. And um, I haven't done a gouache course. But didn't we do a gouache video though? On that? Yeah, we did do a gouache video. Oh, was oh this is video. feeling good. I like this. It's making the reflected light feel a lot better. Look at that texture. See that texture? I love that. Yeah, it looks looks a lot softer than it did before. I think it's because of that because it feels more desaturated. Yeah. Do you have any advice when it comes to trying to tell a story in just one image of, or painting? Look at Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell was the master of storytelling in one image. Look at his work. Uh, you'll be blown away. Blown away. Yeah. Uh, he's just an absolute master. I always tell... Matter of fact, I use him uh, in my story... In the story lecture that I'm going to be giving you guys. Uh, Chuck Williams and I used to talk about that a lot. When Chuck and I worked together for years, he produced Brother Bear... We also were directors together on The Legend of Tembo. And uh, we used to talk about Norman Rock Rockwell and his genius, just how cool he could create a whole story in one image. There we go. There, now, now I'm getting something I like here. A little dust in the air. <laughs> Dust and air? Yeah. But see that texture? Yeah. I really like that chalky kind of texture. Let me throw another layer on top just in case it doesn't go the way I want it to because I want it to get a little lighter. YouTube question. Have you ever heard of Marco Bucci? No, I haven't. They're going to say Marco Polo. <laughs> uh, I'll look him up though. Uh, Devin asks, have you ever met or worked with Tara Whitlatch? Yes, I know Tara Whitlatch very well. We were actually very good friends. And I did, the way I met her was I hired her for Brother Bear. And so we know each other quite well. And, uh, and she, I'm one of her biggest fans. As a matter of fact, one of her, I wrote the foreword to one of her books. So yes, I know her. <laughs> I know her! I know him! <laughs> Uh, do you like Phil Collins' music? Yes, I like Phil Collins' music. <laughs> How can you not like Phil Collins' music? Yeah. Chuck, di Chuck discusses that in his story for live action and animation. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chuck is... Uh, he talks about um, Norman Rockwell, uh, Chuck Williams. He put together story for animation and, 
and uh, live action uh, for us for our website. And uh, he talks about uh, Norman Rockwell in that uh, course. So check it out. So I'm trying to get kind of a soft edge here, but I'm I feel like I'm getting a little too soft. So I'm going to come back in here. Dustin, do an impression of your dad. I I already do, and that's whenever I go whenever he goes there we go. <laughs> or I don't know if anybody can hear that. The kids, the kids, when I when I was when they were younger, if they could tell if I was losing my patience by the way I was breathing. And they used to call it dragon's breath. Yep, it's when you can like, you can clearly hear the sound of air just escaping out of his nose. <laughs> it was like, yeah, I might want to take a few steps back. <laughs> I was never mean to you guys. No, but we, but we have seen you in lose my sh uh, my temper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or about about to, and it wouldn't be our fault. But it would just be like, what if it's in line or something, or in a huge crowd? And even yeah. in a crowd, we'll still be able to hear it. We'll be like, yeah, we we might want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> might want to evacuate the premises. Did you ever create personal art for the care uh, for the actors and musicians you worked with at Disney? Yeah, I did. I gave some art to Phil Collins. You didn't work on Oliver and Company, did you? No, no. I was an intern during Oliver and Company. Yeah, because somebody was asking uh, when you worked on Oliver and Company, did you ever get to meet Billy Joel? No, I didn't work on Oliver and Company. That was before my time. Aaron, do an impression of Dustin. <laughs> I'm terrible at impressions. I can't do it. That was a good one right there. <laughs> uh, do you provide one-on-one -on -one lessons via video uh, for long-distance students? I do not. Not right now we don't. But most of our courses are... Well, all of our courses are pretty thorough. I shouldn't say most. They all are. I try very hard to make sure that... Um, they're as thorough as you can get. So that when you take one of my courses, you're, you know, you're getting as much information as you can. And I'm giving as much information as I can. There we go. I think he needs like grass or something in his mouth, doesn't he? Or she, or she, I should say. Yeah. Just throw it on another layer yes. and see what happens. Just have a little little shadow hanging out the mouth. Just a little, little fur fur, little fur fur. You went on to like do it with the impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Have I talked to you about my cameras? Let me talk about my cameras. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm talking about my awesome camera collection. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm making fun of myself. <laughs> Munch, munch, munch. Munch, munch, munch. 
Nick says, we have hit an all-time simultaneous view record on Twitter, FYI. Woohoo! That feels good. I like that. Nice. Makes me happy. Let me come back here. Are any of your kids artists too? Um, not in the, not in the same way that I am, but they're, I think they're all, you know, they're pretty talented sons of guns. Aww. Yeah, Austin uh, makes amazing jewelry. She's getting into watercolor now. Oh, I know. She's taking off with that. Big time. And I do some graphic graphic design, and uh, and I've been getting into photography the past few few months. <laughs> photography. <laughs> but I've been getting into that. And even um, Vedanta's kids are getting into oh yeah that kind of stuff. Like they they mess around with watercolor and uh, uh, Gloria and Vedanta uh, do uh, photography as well. Yep. So yeah, whole family's all is full of artists. Uh, I'm going to put a layer on top. I'm going to try doing a little dust layer and knock this back. Aaron, do you have any other random talents? Like, can you, can you make perfect pancakes or really good at parallel parking or something? <laughs> yes, I'm actually very good at parallel parking. I am a pancake master. You can spin the ball. Basketball. I can spin a basketball on my finger. And, uh... You also play some mean guitar. Yeah, guitar. There we go. I like that, uh, the dust. Gives it a little bit more character. There we go. What do you think, Dustin? Yeah, I like that. It's almost like a, like, a low, it's like either low fog, or if you make it, if you make it more... Kicking up dust. Huh? Kicking up dust. Yeah, well, because it's uh, it's that gray. It looks more like like an ash than dust. Like dust, uh -huh. that's like usually like a, like a yellow, Whoa. like a yellowish gold. Yeah. Well, no, not always. I just I let it kind of be the color I wanted it to be. So, uh -huh. oh, real quick, Marvin says just completed the charcoal course. The step where you use charcoal powder over your entire drawing is it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it can be, but you got to have faith. You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. Uh, Twitch question. Any tips for learning to draw with a tablet if you can't afford a Cintiq? Yeah, just practice. You know, I learned how to draw with a tablet. I didn't like it, but I learned how to draw with it. And uh, and you just gotta practice, that's all. Do you ever watch the elephant webcam from the Elephant Sanctuary of Tennessee? Uh, yes, I have, actually. Oops, that's not what I want. Just to be uh, curious, do you, did you have a green screen behind you? Yes, I do have a green screen behind me. All right, now I'm going to jump to this brush. I'm going to drop it down. Oops. Bro, love the food in the in his mouth. In honor of Dustin, let's put a little more dust on the elephant, like so. There we go. <laughs> there is. There's our elephant, done with my texture brushes. So, if you uh, go to Creature Art Teacher, pull up those texture brushes. There you go on the green screen. Yeah. Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, and you'll be able to get those brushes and do uh, you know this kind of stuff or the or the dogs that you see behind me? Mm -hmm. Am I frozen there? No. And what am I seeing? Oh, there we go. Right here? There he is. Oh, uh, let me go there. There he is. A little more to your, little more to your right. Right there. Right there. Perfect. There's my dog. But you can do uh, stuff like that. Come back to the elephant again, Dustin. And, and there. there it is. So we did all this today with, uh, with uh, my free drawing brush that I have on my website and our texture brushes. So, and we're also going to put together a little pack 
of the brushes that I actually, all the brushes I use, which is only about five brushes, but we're going to put together a little pack of five brushes. Uh, these are my go-to paint brushes. We're going to make those available very soon. Uh, but anyway, I wanted you to guys, I wanted you guys to see what you could do with these texture brushes and, uh, and have some fun with them. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, and also, I want you guys to remember, uh, oh, by the way, Marco Bucci has re recommended you in his videos. Oh. i got to look him up. Do I, why don't I know that name? Marco Bucci. Anyway, I'm sorry. I should know. Uh, but anyway, um, remember, this weekend, August 3rd and 4th, Dustin. Yes. August 3rd and 4th for this weekend. There it is. <laughs> Um, we got our master class coming up and so if you guys can make it we would love to see you uh, just go to creatureartteacher.com backslash forward slash I guess uh, Orlando 2019 we're gonna be providing you lunch and uh, I'm gonna be signing books and or signing your your books and doing sketches I'm gonna be giving lectures on my career on story creation storytelling creature design animal drawing, animation, all kinds of stuff over two days. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see you guys. Oh, yeah, cool. I love his work. Love his work. That's beautiful. And um, uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Also, keep in mind, you know, these texture brushes, if you're interested in them, they're at our website, creatureartteacher.com. And finally... You can jump over to the perspective course. There it is. We've just finished shooting all the videos for our perspective course. Dustin is madly getting them edited as we speak. Well, kind of. He's just sitting next to me right now. But, <laughs> but, uh, but the pre-order is up and available. So uh, get over to our website and get our perspective course for 40% off. 40% off. It's never going to be that low. So this is a good time to get it. And uh, I'm looking at my... Sorry, I got sidetracked. I'm looking at my painting. And I just... I need to uh, emphasize the... And we're back in the live stream again. Sorry, I, I, <laughs> I couldn't resist. I've got to emphasize the... Uh, is it set to multiply? Yeah. here. Got to get those, those cheekbones a little bit more emphasized. I think I lost the definition on the cheekbone. There. That's better. Yeah, I can tell it was just flattening out a little bit. There. Done. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it today. We had a blast. Like we always do. I always enjoy talking to you guys and drawing and painting and all that kind of stuff. So, we'll be back again on Thursday. And uh, who knows what we'll do. I'm not sure. But between... Uh, oh, yeah, and Patreon. I, Nick just reminded me. I've got a Patreon page now. And I would really love for you guys to go over there. Every Tuesday, we're putting on new images. You'll be able to uh, download them uh, for the dollar uh, uh, membership. You can get the image for free, or not for free, you get it for a buck. You can download it, you can print it out, you can hang it up, do whatever you want with it. For the $5 fee, you'll be able to get the entire Photoshop file with all of the layers and break it apart and do whatever you want with it. And then for the $10 fee, you get all of that, uh, and plus you get a live stream exclusive for the Patreon members each month. So, uh, And we'll be talking about all kinds of stuff, uh, lessons, uh, design lessons, and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, I would really love it if you guys uh, could go over there and check it out. And uh, if you want to participate, that would be great. It helps us. Uh, it helps us kind of create for you guys. So uh, go on over and check it out if you're interested. It's patreon.com forward slash Aaron Blaze Art. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I really had a great time today. And uh, I think Dustin did. I did. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, we will catch you on Thursday so between now and Thursday 
try some of the techniques you've learned uh, check out some of the brushes um, but most of all go out be nice to somebody put some beauty back into the world and I'll see you on Thursday Dustin don't forget to put your shopping cart away and don't forget to put your shopping cart away at all can't believe you forgot that <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys on Thursday glad you guys enjoyed the stream hope you guys enjoyed future streams as well and until next time Cowboy Bebop. See ya. Bye.